Oh, let's have a look. Just my hair. That's fine. Yes, I do check my hair. <laughs> if you were going to be on camera for thousands of people, you'd do it too, folks. Though. But today's video is actually sponsored by me. And as a, you know, what, why not? I'm going to get myself a beer. And I know it's twist off, because every time I do a twist off one, someone always says, oh, it's twist off, it's really easy. Open, you've still got to pop it. And I'm going to open this beer with a copy of Final Fantasy Spirits Within, the novelization. Oh, wow. Yes, it's a thing that exists, and yes, I own it. So let's give this a go, shall we? I forgot Final Fantasy was a thing. I forgot it was a, like, this, oh God, no, Spirits <laughs> Within. It's not holding up. Like, even the book doesn't hold up lots. Oh, there we go. Cheers, everybody. In the context of the X-Files universe, Dana Scully is a hyper-competent FBI agent slash doctor who spends her time intermittently pistol-whipping parasitic alien ghosts and cutting up the people, said alien pass... Oh, I almost <laughs> nailed it. I almost got so it. close. Cutting up the people killed by those same alien parasitic ghosts. Arguably one of the most popular and well-known characters on TV in the 90s, Dana Scully is widely credited with causing the interest in aliens and shit to explode amongst the general populace, as well as inspiring countless women to pursue the hard sciences. So, what's going on here? Uh, well, there's this thing um, quite aptly dubbed the Scully Effect. And in a nutshell, the theory posits that by merely being her charming, fuckable self, Dana Scully just influenced countless women to pursue the hard sciences so that they might also one day have a man explain their own field of expertise to them. Oh, not mansplaining. Man, what a thrill. No, mansplaining, oh my god. <laughs> um, Carl, do you know where a mansplainer gets his water from? Well, well, actually. <laughs> You know my favourite thing about making fun of mansplainers? Every time you do it, a mansplainer comes out and explains to you why you're being wrong. It's like that thing, is it? So when you say, like, um, uh, uh, something about men, it's like, well, not all men. And oh, that led to, like, my favourite fucking dunk on that, where it's like, just, I think it's, a, oh, it's an old tweet that I can't remember the author of now, and it's like, help, some men are breaking into my house. Well, not all men would do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. It's like, <laughs> and I fucking hate that because every man who does it knows exactly what they're doing and they're picking up on people for speaking like a normal person like everybody speaks generally in their day-to-day -day life like you'll say oh man today's shit it's like well it's not shit is it it's just you had one bad thing it's like i know but i'm venting yeah exactly but the moment you say oh man like oh why are guys such dickheads like not all guys <laughs> it's like no, i know not every single man on earth i think the, the worst i see the mansplaining is when they try and explain like bodily functions of women. Oh yeah. It's like how how can you talk about it? You don't know. No. Oh, and they try and explain. Oh, your period, period pains aren't that bad. It's not like getting kicked in the balls. Although one funny one that I did see was because you get it on Twitter where people say what's the dumbest thing someone's mansplained to you. Oh yeah. And this woman put, oh mine is I was driving home with my husband and he informed me that our house was up ahead on on the left. It's like how would <laughs> how would you not know where your house is? <laughs> like her own husband was like. Oh yeah, houses just up here. Anyway, for the people out there who are thinking, like, no, TV can't influence people that much. Like, it absolutely 100% can. Uh, I literally have a degree in media and communication studies, and I've studied this shit for years, both academically and just it interests me. Uh, the media and the media that we consume has an almost terrifying influence on the way we think and act, and uh, just some more light-hearted examples of the way media has influenced um, the world in general is something known as the CSI effect, which I think we've mentioned in a video before. People don't recall. It's a term used to describe a phenomenon observed in juries after the release of shows like CSI, um, where juries are placing way more trust in forensic evidence than they should. And they expect forensic evidence to be a lot more visual and impressive than it usually generally is. And that makes sense when you think like CSI, you'll have someone there get like half a fingerprint off like a hot dog on the ground outside. And they'll find out like that the person who a plot to kill the president. Yeah. And then you have people in court and they'll go all in like a forensic expert. And one of the things that forensic experts fucking hate about those shows is that they always frame forensic evidence as being infallible. Mm. Or as being like, you know, dead to rights. And like they have to consistently stress in court. It's like, well, it is beyond reasonable doubt that this person did it. It's like, well, did they do it? So we can never say for sure, because you know, you can never be 100% sure about anything when it comes to forensics. And that just level of just like not quite knowing. Mm -hmm. And then in the audience, it's like, well, I watch CSI and they always know who did it when they get like fingerprints and stuff like that. Also, you have cases where they don't have forensic evidence, but they have other kinds of evidence like eyewitness testimony or just the ability to pass like, you know, their day. For example, if someone's accused of murder, and the police might 
for example, know that, oh, we knew that you were not in your house at this time when you said you were, and we have an eyewitness that placed you at the scene, you have motive to commit this murder. So what, do you have like fingerprints? No, but we have all these other evidence that points to them being beyond a reasonable doubt, the person that did it. Mm -hmm. And in jury's minds, they see shows that say, well, without forensic evidence, you can't have a case. And members of law enforcement and forensic pathologists and stuff like that have expressed endless frustration at the fact they'll go to court to explain their own field of expertise and have juries tell them that they're wrong. Oh, no, it's just, it's daft, isn't it? It's like stuff on TV is usually exaggerated. Mm -hmm. It's never correct. So yeah, it's, it does have a big influence. Because I remember like when I watched um, Devil Wears Prada for the first time, yes. I was like, God, the uh, working in the magazine industry sounds looks horrific. Yep. It sounds horrible. I don't know if it is like that, but you imagine that's what the workplace is going to be like. I and mean, I guess it's the same for CSI. They assume, because they've seen it on the TV, that yeah. is exactly how it is. And it's yeah. Well, just speaking from our own perspective, like making these videos, how often do we release a piece of content and have people leaving comments or giving us feedback that suggests they think we recorded, edited, and wrote that video on that day? Yeah, quite often. Right. We are constantly dealing with people who seem to think that the videos that we upload are written, recorded, and edited, and put onto the channel that day. But it's like if you take films, for example, they get filmed years in advance and yeah. don't get released. It's the same sort of thing, but on a smaller scale yeah. with us. Do you know what it reminds me of? That bit in Futurama where they're trying to record that episode of Single Female Lawyer. It's like, <laughs> it took half an hour to write. I thought it'd take half an hour to say. Single female lawyer having lots of sex. There's that thing of like, oh, our videos are 10 minutes long. Surely it only takes 10 minutes to make. It's like, no, that's not how it works. And then another example is uh, something called the Simpsons effect. And this is a lot more like depressing to think about. And it is that um, the general consensus on the safety of nuclear power has been massively um, detrimentally impacted by the Simpsons specifically its consistent portrayal of nuclear power as being dangerous and being run by incompetent people or, in the case of Mr. Burns, evil conglomerates <laughs> who don't care about no. environmental impact. And I think that's the best example because that's a fucking cartoon and it's still impacted people's perception of how safe nuclear power is and how it works. Huh? Ah, it's my problem! We're doomed! Bring it back to the X-Files and the Scully effect. Uh, while there are countless anecdotal sources backing up the existence of the effect um, from both people working on the show and women in STEM and the FBI. Like, that's not exactly the kind of hard proof a keen woman of science like Dana Scully would expect, isn't it? So do we have any numbers? Yes, we do, because we have a study conducted by the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media, which were tasked by Fox themselves of discerning the just veracity of the claim that Dana Scully, the character, had influenced women in this positive way. And they found that absolutely she did. Uh, they interviewed thousands of women from STEM and they found out that a sizable percentage of them actively credited the character of Dana Scully with making them realize, oh wow, science is a thing girls can do. Yeah. And it's one of those things when you think like um, representation in media mm -hmm. and we'll go back to like weirdo men on the internet again. Every single time a film has like a black person in it or a gay person, they'll always talk about, oh, it's like, you know, it's forced diversity. It's not, the, the world is diverse. Yeah. And, People from those minority groups want to see themselves represented in the media that they consume. Exactly, yeah. And the best example of that I can think of is the character of Rey from Star Wars, where endlessly complained about by weird men on the internet. But then you have all those pictures of just Daisy Ridley meeting little girls dressed like Rey. It's like, that means so much Aww. to them to see that, oh wow, girls can be heroes too. And I know there are men out there going, that's stupid. It's like all media has been made with you in mind. You have never had to worry about seeing yourself represented in media. Yeah. Everybody else has. Characters like Dana Scully are very important because as that study found, it was critical to introducing little girls at home to the concept they could be scientists too. Because if you think about it, when did you see scientists on TV who were women before Dana Scully? Like maybe background characters of that thing, but main characters who are competent, good at their job, and don't take shit from anybody. Mm -hmm. Just a strong, confident woman in a field that's ordinarily dominated by men, excelling. That's great, because like you said it's in the 90s as well. Yeah. That's great. But I don't think anything sums up just how wholesome the Scully effect is more than stories told by Gillian Anderson, because she doesn't need any evidence or hard data um, to tell her that women were influenced by Scully to become scientists and FBI agents, because she meets those kind of women all the time. And Gillian Anderson has spoken on many occasions about how she's frequently approached on the street 
by doctors, scientists, researchers, FBI agents, like women in law enforcement, secret service agents, just for just to thank her for showing them they were younger, that that is an option that they have. Oh, that's um, really nice. If anyone's curious about what Gillian Anderson's response to this is, she normally says, yay! Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like that's something I would do. If someone came up to me and was like, oh, I really enjoy your content, I'm like, yeah. I got into making fact videos because you know, I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so nearby Nisha, I mentioned at the start of this video that this video is sponsored by myself. Specifically, I have set up a merch store for the Fact Fiend brand um, uh, in collaboration with Psycho Apparel, um, who frequently collaborated with us in the past, mm -hmm. and to set up a merch store where you can buy t-shirts like this one, or this one I'm wearing. And like, I don't wear this just for videos. I wear this at home because I fucking love this shit. It's so cool. <laughs> and you can go check out the links below to see the merch store that we've set up. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just, it's one of those things, we've had a merch store for a while on Redbubble, but this one particularly, I'm really happy to plug. So I never plugged the Redbubble one because the margins were set really low so fans wouldn't feel ripped off. But this one, we're collaborating with um, some... Not local, because they're based in Scotland, but just like individuals. Like it's not a big company. These are individuals who's like ourselves, yeah. like got their start on the internet and managed to build that up into like a business. Mm -hmm. So it's a, actually it's a collaboration between Big Wangers Incorporated and Cycle Apparel. I don't think they're going to write that on their um, uh, website, but that is where they send the invoices to, <laughs> and I insist that they do. Every time I have to do my like, tax return, I have to put Big Wangers in. Big so. Wangers Incorporated. Oh, Speaking of which, if you like Big and you want to represent Big Wangers Incorporated, one of the shirts we're selling on the store. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. That's a, that's I have a, that one. You've got that one. Oh, it's this one. That's one from the Redbubble store. We will be transferring all the stuff from the Redbubble store over to the new merch store just in time because, it's like, mm -hmm. us doing it all ourselves, like getting all the printing done ourselves, just takes time. Yeah. And we try to be transparent with an audience. So, stuff on the Redbubble store will be available if you want those more intricate designs, but we're going to be cut porting those over as quickly as we're able to based on the funds that we have in the time available. But, I'm going to represent Big Wangers Incorporated. Got a Big Wangers Inc. brand on a t-shirt. And do you know who's a fan of this t-shirt? My own mother. My own mother <laughs> has one of these shirts and she wears no, it all the time. No. I will, I'll, I'll ask permission from my mother to get that picture of her wearing a Big Wangers top. Amazing. She loves it because she's very proud of the fact her son owns a company called Big Wangers. And she walks around wearing it at work. And people ask her this, this is my son's company. So if you want to be as cool as my mom, <laughs> check out those links below. <laughs> Isn't that great? Also, Psycho has got some really cool designs. They I do, noticed. Yes, like, so. I've seen the new stuff today. It's, like, it's really cool. Yeah. So while you're on the store, go check out Psycho stuff as well. Yes. But they're not paying me to say this, but we are now technically working. I don't know what exactly the nature of our deal is because I'm really bad at business. There's someone else handling that behind the scenes, which was advice I got from Psycho. Of like, you need to get someone to run your business, mate. Because you need to focus on making the content. Like, making the content is what you're good at. The business side, you're bad at that, as I've established many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we have someone behind the scenes running all that. If you'd like to submit a design for a shirt, you can contact them at the links you can find below. I was just thinking, like, what new designs could we do? Like, any of the photoshops that we did to, you know, put together. Is there anything we could use that wouldn't get, like, copyright? There's a few. Because but... I know that Star Wars one we had yeah. with Ray. We can't have that like, one, nope. <laughs> nope. So I'm wondering if there's like any of the like, photoshops that we, me and Brad have done that could be turned into designs. Well, let us know in the comments if there's something you'd like to see on a shirt. But um, yeah. I, I do have like an open call for artists because one of the ideas I've had is like similar to um, what Psycho Apparel have done where they've reimagined the Fact Fiend logo. Mm -hmm. uh, there are numerous reimaginings of the Fact Fiend logo. One of them's Heal Up, the little fiend, so just chilling. Cute. It's a little cute fiend. Um, I've got an artist who's currently working on an anthropomorphized anime girl version of the Fact Fiend logo, which is going to be on a shirt at some point and will advertise wow. when it's released, no doubt. But yeah, if any artists out there have an idea for a reimagining of the Fact Fiend logo, be in touch. I'd love to buy it from you.